In this video, we're going to do some more examples of uh, literal equations where we're rearranging formulas for uh, a particular variable of interest. In all these examples that I'm going to work on here, I have what are called ration formulas that, that are of a, a rational equation form. And this means, if you recall, that uh, any rational equations are ones that have these fractions with variables in the denominator. So for these problems, if I want to try to solve, uh, one of our strategies when we were dealing with rational equations before was the concept of we hate fractions, so let's rewrite this equation with no fractions. This is a particularly wonderful idea when you're dealing with literal equations because things don't cancel out very well, and um, if we don't use this strategy of getting rid of those fractions, um, oftentimes we end up with complex fractions as part of our solution process where you have fractions inside of fractions and they get really ugly. So the best way to avoid that is just by getting rid of the fractions, and to do that we want to multiply by things that are going to get all of our denominators to cancel. So for example in this problem here, notice that we have a K2 and an M1, so if we multiply each side by a K2 and an M1, then we'll be able to get rid of the denominators. On the left, the K2 will cancel out and leave me with M1 and K1 together. On the other side, the M1s will cancel out and leave me with K2 being multiplied by M1 plus M2. So I've been able to rewrite my equation now with no fractions, and that's going to be a huge help. Now at this point, notice that I have M1 on this side and I have M1 on this side, and that's what I'd like to get by itself. The problem here now is I have more than one of them. So we're going to use the strategies that we learned in the last video, and that is first we need to get anything with an M1 on the same side of the equation and everything else on the other side. Right now the M1 is trapped, so I'm going to need to get it out of this set of parentheses, and remember we can use the distributive property to do that. So using the distributive property, I'm going to end up with M1 times K2 plus M2 times K2. Now, I'm putting the M's in front just so that they look similar to what's on the left-hand side, but keep in mind that when you have things like this being multiplied together, the order that you multiply does not matter. So we could have written this as K2M1 and K2M2, and that's perfectly fine. Um, now I've got M1's on both sides of the equation, so I'm going to go ahead and move this M1K2 over to the other side. On the right, the M1K2 cancels out. On the left, these things look very similar, but they're not like terms because the first one has an M1 with a K1, and then the second term has an M1 with a K2. So that's really as far as I can go. I can't combine those anymore. On the right-hand side, I have M2K2. And again, remember these subscripts just mean that they're different variables. M1 is different than M2, K1 is different than K2, and you just need to treat them as such. All right, now I've got my M1s both on the same side of the equation. So our next step is to go ahead and pull that M1 out as a common factor, and that gets us from having two M1s in our equation to now only having one. When we pull out the M1, we're left with a K1 minus K2 behind. On the right-hand side, I still have that M2, K2 that was there before. All right, I'm just going to copy this over so you can kind of see how this progresses. We have M1, K1 minus K2 equals M2K2. Now, I still want to get the M1 by itself. It's being multiplied by this parentheses group, so to get rid of it, I can divide by K1 minus K2. Do that on each side. Here, the M1 minus, or the K1 minus K2 cancels and leaves my M1 alone, which I want. On the right-hand side, I have M2K2 divided by K1 minus K2. And notice, again, because of the subtraction in the denominator, I am not able to do any canceling or reducing on the right-hand side. So that is as simplified as I can get, and that is my rewritten formula with M1 being solved for. So this concept, again, if you have these rational expressions, you have these fractions in your original equations, multiply by the denominators to get an equation that's just flat with no fractions in it at all, and then it's much easier to work with um, from there. Let's try this again with problem number six. In this case, we have three different denominators, a P, a Q, and an F. And so what I'm going to have to do as I go through, and I'm just going to rewrite this again here, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. I'm going to need to multiply each term by P and Q and F. 
because I need to get rid of all three denominators as part of my process. We can't do anything to get the p by itself when it's in, that, in the denominator of the fraction, so we need this first step. In the first term here, the p's are going to cancel and leave me with 1 times qf. In the second term, the q's are going to cancel and leave me with 1 times pf. And on the other side of the equation, the f's are going to cancel and leave me with 1 times pq. I just left the ones off to make it a little bit easier to look at. Now, in order to finish, let's go back to our original problem, and it looks like I'm solving for p. Right now, I have two p's in my equation, so I'm going to need to get them on the same side so that I can pull out a common factor. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and move the pf over to the right. That's going to leave the qf on the left, which doesn't have a p in it at all. And then the two terms on the right, pq minus pf, both have p's in them. So my next step is going to be to go ahead and pull that common factor of p out. That takes me from having two p's in the equation to just one. And I'm left with p times q minus f in parentheses. Then I'll copy this over here. So we have qf equals p times q minus f. So if I want to finish solving the equation for p, right now it's being multiplied by this q minus f group. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by that q minus f group on each side. On the right, that gets the p by itself. And on the left, I have qf divided by q minus f. Um, because of that subtraction on the bottom, I cannot do any canceling in terms of factors. It looks super tempting because we see so many of the same variables, but that subtraction keeps us from having any common factors at all. So um, that's as far as you can go. All right, and this brings us to our very final example. Um, in this case, we want to get, we have a equals f times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, and we want to solve this for v. We have multiple problems or multiple issues in this particular problem. We want to get the v by itself. It's trapped inside the radical, so that's going to be an important part to get out. I also have a fraction, but it's also trapped inside the radical, and so um, let's go ahead and get rid of that square root symbol first. Before we can get rid of the square root, we're going to need to get rid of the f. That's the farthest thing away from the v. Um, in my problem. And notice there really is only one v here too, which is cool. So um, let's go ahead then and divide both sides by f. Again, we're looking for the weakest link. All of this 1 minus v squared over c squared is inside the square root, and then the f is outside of even that. So we need to get rid of the f first. So we're going to start by dividing both sides by f. That's going to get me a over f equals the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Again, because there's only a single v and it's inside this square root, I want to think about undoing all the things that are on the same side as it. Um, be, right now I've got this square root. To get rid of a square root, I can square both sides. On the right-hand side, the square and the square root undo each other. That's their only purpose. And I'm left with just 1 minus v squared over c squared. So that works really nice. On the left-hand side, I have a squared or a over f squared, and that's the same as a squared over f squared, where I'm able to go ahead and square both the top and the bottom. All right, at this point in time, we can um, rewrite the fraction, uh, or we can get rid of the denominators, or because there's only this one v and it's on the top, since the variable I'm looking for is on the top, we don't necessarily even need to worry about getting rid of the fractions if we don't want to. Um, we can just peel all these other pieces away. Um, at, in this case, the c squared is part of a division problem, so this 1 over here is a weaker link, so we can subtract 1 from each side. That's going to get me a squared over f squared minus 1. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have negative v squared over c squared. If I want to finish getting this by itself, um, I'm going to need, to, right now I want to get that v by itself. I've got to get rid of the c squared and the negative. I can multiply both sides by uh, negative c squared in order to do that. On this side, the negative times the negative makes a positive. The c squared times the c squared, or the c squared on the bottom and the c squared on the top, right, because we were multiplying, cancel out, and I'm left with just v squared. On the right-hand side, think of this as c squared over 1. I'm going to have negative c squared a squared over f squared minus 
And then the negative times the negative is going to make that actually plus c squared. So now we have this particular expression here. Uh, to finish up, we want to get the squared by itself, or, or we want to get the v by itself, so we need to get rid of the squared. So let's go ahead and divide. Not divide. We want to get the v squared by itself. To undo a square operation, we want to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of each side. On the right-hand side, the square and the square root undo each other and leave me just with a v. And on the left side, I'm left with this expression here, negative c squared a squared over f squared plus c squared. That's gotten my variable v by itself. I've undone all the operations and I'm left with this particular uh, expression as I go. Again, keep in mind you may want to consider uh, plus minus in this situation because we took the square root of both sides um, and that does introduce sometimes that negative possibility. Um, and you should just consider if that, if having a negative solution would make sense in this particular context or not.